All right, everybody, we are going to get rocking and rolling for our last presentation uh, today. So we have um, Jay and Adrian, the two crazy cat ladies, are going to talk to us about uh, helping cats with feline leukemia. The two crazy cat ladies are cat advocates, social media influencers, bloggers, and content creators. They offer a full line of natural supplements, feline essential, made to help treat and prevent many common health issues in cats. In 2015, motivated by the lack of available resources for natural feline health, Jay and Adrian dedicated their lives to learning and sharing all they can to help cats live the longest, healthiest, and happiest lives possible. They host regular live shows on social media to connect with cat parents and answer questions they have about their kitties, as well as sharing tips about cat health and happiness via blogs and videos. So welcome, Jay and Adrian. There you are, perfect. Yay! We we had it Happy Catter Day, everyone. Thank you. Um, big shout out and thank you to Community, Community Cats Podcast uh, for putting this on today. What an amazing event it's been. And really, you know, there's there's not enough people in the world giving um, FELV positive cats a voice. And so big, big, big thank you. So to, grateful to you guys. Yeah, this to is exciting. Community Cats Podcast. So yeah. thank you guys. For those of you guys that don't know who we are, my name is Jay. I'm Adrian. And together we are the Two Crazy Cat Ladies. Um, we started in pet nutrition back in 2005 um, <clears throat> with my family business. And after spending, um, after a, a bit of heartbreak and spending 10 years in the industry, we learned that it was really, really dog centric. And when my soul kitty, um, <clears throat> uh, my sweet Tiggy, um, was diagnosed with feline leukemia, we had no answers. We had no one to go to, um, even in our own industry, within our own business. Uh, nobody knew because it's a very cat, because it's a cat specific illness, right? Virus. And so nobody knew what to do. We went to the to the vet. Um, he went down really, really fast. Uh, we still. Taggy did, not the veterinarian. No, <laughs> no, the vet didn't go down fast. Um, but uh, but Taggy was, you know, within a matter of days from finding out that he had. Um, from the diagnosis of feline leukemia to um, having to uh, really to having to let him go um, was a matter of two days, and um, it was it was really rough for us because we had we had no idea what had just happened, um, and so he is really one of our biggest motivations to start our business. So in 2015 we branched off and started um, our business as the Two Crazy Cat Ladies, um, so that we could learn everything that we could to help other cat parents that might be in the same um, situation where they're not getting answers specifically to their cats. We, we all know that you know the, the pet industry is very dog centric. So, um, so our motto is to learn, share and grow. And that's what we do. We spend every day learning everything that we can about cats and cat health. And then we share that information online to help every cat live the longest, healthiest and happiest life possible. Um, so we wanted to talk today about what we've learned about feline leukemia since going through that devastating experience. Um, and the first thing that, that he taught us, the first thing that we did learn is that this usually is not a death sentence, right? And I know you guys know that. Most of you guys are caring for feline leukemia cats. Um, our cats, we had five cats at the time, five or four, five, five cats at the time. And, um, <clears throat> And he shared water bowls and food dishes and roomed each other. They were yeah, they were they were all best buds. Um, and and so of course our biggest fear was, uh, are we going to lose all of our cats now? Because you know the the vet told us it was highly contagious. None of our other cats got it. Um, and I know so many people have, um, so many other speakers today have uh, touched on the fact that um, it's not as transmittable as. Uh, in, in every case, um, as uh, we get, you know, many people are scared of. Right. And many shelters and veterinarians right. will, will recommend euthanasia um, because of that fear of, um, of the contagion rate. Um, I would say it, one of our boys is actually still with us today. He's 18 years old, um, super healthy. But the, the reason that our cats did not, that our other cats did not, um, 
get the, even though they were exposed, did not actually get the virus um, is because their bodies triggered an immune response, right? We all know that. We're all very well aware of, of that now with the with the pandemic, the way that viruses work. And um, and but if immunity health is really the number one thing that we want to talk about today because if you have a cat that is um, feline leukemia positive, we know that 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 they have a weakened immune system, right? The majority of cats with um, with feline leukemia actually end up suffering from secondary infections. Um, they are much more susceptible to other ailments, um, even cancer, because of that weakened immune system. So we wanna talk about how to keep those immune systems strong. And if you have other cats that you're worried about um, transmitting the disease or, or catching the disease, that the virus, then um, there are ways that we can also help support their immunity health. Well, and I was going to say, I really love uh, that Margaret Tompkins just mentioned, too, what a personal choice it is. I think ideally we all want to be able to test for feline leukemia and treat with, you know, lifelong immunity support uh, long before any symptoms show. Unfortunately, uh, our story is that we noticed Tyge not drinking from the water bowl and not wanting to eat as much. And from there, it was a very fast decline. Uh, and so many people that contact us, they are contacting us because their cat is symptomatic. They usually live in a mixed household. They've got other cats that have tested uh, negative, but they have one that's testing positive. And because of those symptoms, the recommendation is euthanasia. And I feel like there is, it's such a scary time. It's such a scary diagnosis. I love uh, Community Cats for putting this on because it really does help talk through the fear and really bring some uh, clarity to this whole issue for people and their cats. And um, especially if there are other uh, cats in the household and the fact that it is such a, a personal choice adopting a feeling of leukemia positive cats because yes. they can live such a long and healthy life so we really do focus um, with the people that we're working with now that their cats that are F, uh, FELV positive. FELV, is that the? FELV, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. right. We're finding out there's lots of different lots ways. Of different ways. Um, <laughs> working on that immunity health has been such a game changer for them and i i would say one of the biggest pieces of feedback we get that warms our heart is how grateful they are that they did not uh euthanize yeah. and that uh there is such great power in in the immune system and in really handling this virus by uh by built by addressing the virus and by doing everything we can to build that immune system. Yeah, absolutely. And step number one, as we all know for ourselves and for our pets, um, when it comes to immunity health is diet, right? Mm. Food is so important when it comes to um, helping our overall health, keeping our immune system strong. Our cats are obligate carnivores. That means that they need a the majority of their diet should be meat, meat-based. Um, it is a, a super amazing for their immune systems to get high quality meat in their regular diets. A fresh food diet is great. We feed a raw food diet, but because of that weakened immune system, um, um, a, a felby kitty um, might be better with a cooked diet, but not maybe a, not a highly processed diet, right? So if we stay away from, if we're able to stay away from kibble diets, which are very high in starch and carbs, then, and these starch and carbs create inflammation in the body, which is just going to exasperate um, the, the issue and exasperate, um, actually make them even more susceptible um, to other ailments because inflammation is you know the root of I'm looking up see here um, the the root of so many illnesses in cats um, so we want to we want to address diet first and foremost a moisture rich diet our cats are also desert animals so they they need to get the majority of their moisture from their food um, they they're not going to be able to make up for it at the water bowl because they have such a low thirst drive so we want to make sure that we are giving them a good moisture rich high protein diet um, on a on a regular basis um, i know like smalls is is a, a newer company right now that's making fresh food. It's cooked. Um, I believe Cat Person. I've tried it There's myself. It's very delicious. Yes. Um, great sourcing, uh, just a really great food. Yeah. yeah, you can also DIY your cat's food. Uh, this is a great way to do it on a budget, uh, is to, to make your cat's food at home. Now, it does still need to be 
complete imbalance. So you, you want to make sure that you have a, a good uh, recipe. Um, you can go to freshfoodconsultants.org and um, there's a whole list of people that specialize in, um, in creating recipes for pet parents. Formulators. So they are, yes. as, and specifically for cats, you know, we talk about, you know, the, the pet industry, these, there are specific feline form, uh, formulators there. So yeah. it's a great resource. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's, you know, one of those ways that we, we think that, you know, making our cats food, just like, you know, you would if, if you had a human child or if you have human children, um, when you're, when you're making their food, you're putting more love into it. And it's always, you know, just a, just a little bit better. So if you, if you want to DIY it, um, that's a good resource. There's lots of resources out there actually for DIY, uh, recipes, but diet is going to be number one when it comes to keeping that immune system strong or strengthening that immune system. I want to piggyback on top of that and just address the, kind of like the elephant in the in the cat's room, which is our cats are finicky, right? I feel like a lot of people um, will say, there's no way my cat is going to eat uh, wet food. There's no way my cat is going to eat cooked or raw food or any of that. And yet we hate baby girl. And yet we we still. Uh, what are you doing? She's chasing a bug. <laughs> and yet we still really uh, have. Food is so foundational. So um, I know that even, you know, Jay mentioned, uh, especially for cats that have white blood cell, uh, high white blood cell counts, we or don't low. want, or, sorry, low, that you don't want to be feeding a fully raw diet. But I do think that when you give the body what the body needs, we've seen, and not just with feline leukemia, uh, the body is an amazing thing. And the ability that when you give it what it is biologically designed to Consume. use as fuel uh, to heal itself, to help bring healing in their body. It is an incredible thing. So I really encourage uh, for anyone who's nervous about diet to take a little deep dive and um, reach out to people in the community. It, it yeah. is, it's a big game changer. And you can always reach out to us as yes. well. Um, we're all over social media. Um, that's why we showed you guys our little picture. Uh, we're all over social media um, and we have an email address and a website and all that all that special stuff. Now, number two, another um, great way that we can help to um, increase the immunity health in our cats is supplements. supplements. So, and we're, we're huge supplement junkies, okay? Um, so just gonna preface by that, but uh, that's because we've seen the power of supplementation. When we were feeding a kibble diet, a highly processed diet, um, this is when our cats were going through the issue and when we lost our tiger, um, they were all eating a highly processed diet. But we did know, the one thing that we did know is that we could, we could supplement in and replace many of those nutrients that are lost during the processing, uh, the high heat uh, pos uh, processing process. So um, so we started adding in, so they were all getting supplements to really help support their immune system. There are many supplements out there. We actually have, and you'll see in your goodie bag that we're, that we've got a, a special discount for it, a Filu kit. Now, let me tell you, this was, this is really cool because when we started this business, this was the number one thing that we wanted to, uh, to address, right? Because of our situation, we were like, how can we be a voice for the feline leukemia positive kitties? How can we offer them something that's going to be helpful um, so they're not in the same situation that we were? And we reached out to our holistic animal scientist in Oklahoma that we had been working with for 10 years prior. And lo and behold, he is a huge cat rescuer. And we did not know that for 10 he's years. Working with him. He was a, he's a closet cat lady. And he had rescued at that time over a hundred cats. Now it's probably 200. He'd rescued over a hundred cats and he formulates natural remedies for all animals. And so he had created um, a supplement that's called in our in our shop now it's called Virax and he created this specifically for the cats that he was rescuing that tested positive for feline leukemia and he did all of his research and he was like this helps to attack the virus in the gut and really helps to bring back that appetite because a lot of times that's another thing that feline leukemia when that when the virus really gets bad the cats will start to lose um, their appetite they'll start to feel bad and then they lose their appetite and sometimes it's dehydration that takes them down and so <clears throat> He um, he was like, I have something. And we were like, yes, this is perfect. So we put that together uh, with our Catalyst, which is a huge immune boosting um, USDA organic plant-based supplement. Both of them are, are fuss free and you can just add it to a little bit of wet food because you should be feeding at least a little bit of wet food per day. Um, and you can just add it to a little bit of wet food. We have seen 
phenomenal results with just this kit. We've seen phenomenal results. Um, cats that you know were, were told that they need to be euthanized because they were so sick with feline leukemia um, reached out to us for last you know last resort. What can can I do? One more thing to try. Um, and here we are, what four or five years later, and these cats are still thriving. So it's it's an amazing kit, and that's it's it sounds like a shameless plug, but there are other supplements too that can be really helpful in building that immune system. Medicinal mushrooms. Yes. Mushrooms are really a, a really great. Turmeric is also Turmeric. one of the most powerful supplements that we can be adding in. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of uh, things about uh, vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant as well. And many veterinarians actually that we know of will actually treat feline leukemia positive uh, patients that are that are uh, falling ill with um, with vitamin C uh, IV treatments. Yeah, and there's a lot of Chinese herbs that are out there that also really help build the immune system. I think it sounds like you know, there's a lot of stuff. What I love is that the resources for cat specific needs are really growing. Uh, and I know, for example, when it comes to herbs, I want to give a shout out to Julianne Thorne with Naturally Cats. Yeah. Uh, she actually puts together uh, an herb garden, the Herb Garden. <laughs> She's, She's from the UK. UK. She is a beautiful and, and really uh, well educated. Well educated. Um, Behaviorist, kind of herbalist, yeah, and all about our cats. So what is really wonderful is realizing that there are some other things that are out there that aren't just medications, that aren't over the counter, that anything like that, that these are real things that the body can actually choose. She talks all the time about um, self-selection mm -hmm. and on these herb gardens, which is basically putting down some dried herbs around a piece of carpet or their bedding or whatever, and you watch how your cats respond and they go to what they need and they, it's maybe they ingest it, maybe they want to lay on it, but it's fascinating and it's a very um, soothing thing to cats and, and can be very healing. So yeah. looking into some of those other options that are out there that can really help support the diet, really uh, help support the body with, with some great supplementation yeah. Huge game changer. Yes. Getting that immune system strong with diet and supplementation is just a, just an, an easy, but also a fantastic way to extend the life of our felby kitties. Oh, I'm, I'm you're totally going to start using yeah. that word. Um, well, and talking about self-selection, though, I think is such a great segue into the next topic, yes. which is activity, exercise. Mm hmm and keeping our cats active, stimulated, enriched. I think that um, to sit on the on the bird gun for a second longer, I think that when we give our cats a chance to really think through what they want, especially in a multi-cat household, it is awesome to see how enriching it can be for them. So whether it is providing uh, something like that, whether it's growing cat grasses or broccoli sprouts that are awesome, also another great, great the immune system. Uh, help to the immune system, um, those are great things that can really stimulate them mentally, you yes. know, to yeah, and give their body something good too. Yeah, absolutely. So, and but but physical stimulation stimulation is also so important. We know that it's important. Diet and exercise, right? Diet and exercises. I mean, it's just like a, a worldwide thing. Like, right? We're it's very good for us and our bodies. It's also very good for our cats and their bodies, especially with indoor kitties. And most of our FBLB positive kitties are inside. Um, we still have to we have we to take that effort because we put them in. We put them in four walls in which they um, no longer get to um, have all the activity that they would have outside, right? So they tend to sleep a lot. And sometimes we blame that on their diagnosis. And sometimes we blame it on them just being a cat and being lazy. But but cats are not actually intrinsically lazy. We have to make the effort to give them that exercise. Train your FELV kitties on a leash and take them outside. A catio is a great way to give them both mental and physical uh, stimulation. Vertical space in the home where they can run and climb and move those those muscles and move those bones. This is all really helpful for their overall health, both mentally and physically. Um, and so we have to we have to make that the bird. I'll do a shout out to the bird, yeah. right? I mean, you guys probably all have one, um, but it is our cat's favorite. I mean, of all toys. wand toys. Da bird, it, I think it's Go Cat that makes it. Um, great, great way to get your kitty moving, moving around, stimulated mentally and physically. Doing this on a routine basis is really important to stress is one of the leading causes of disease, not just in us, but also in our kitties. Exercise is the cheapest 
and most effective way to reduce stress. So we don't want our FELV positive kitties to be stressed out. We want to be able to reduce that stress. So we need to be able to exercise them on a routine basis. Ohio State University did a fantastic study on routine in cats, routine feeding time, routine play time, routine scooping the litter. All of this showed in the study, it showed that even healthy cats, they had sick cats and they had healthy cats. And even the healthy cats when taken off routine were showing signs of illness. So I think it is really important that we also pay attention to our cat's stress levels. A bored cat is a stressed cat. We want to get our cats moving. Yeah, and very practically, I really think that this boils down to us evaluating our schedules and really looking at where we can take, you know, 15, 20 minutes every day in multi-cat households. We know this is difficult, but, um, you know, as they were talking about earlier, a lot of times uh, feeling leukemia positive kitties are adopted in as a single cat in a home. So, and that can make it a little bit easier to come up with a come up with a routine but by and this is obviously great for all kitties to have that kind of indoor enrichment but evaluating your schedule and finding out what you can do to implement something on a regular basis because it really does, you can really see how your cats look forward to something like that and especially mm -hmm. when they're dealing with uh, the the stressor of the virus itself uh, it is an incredibly powerful thing, not just to remove the stressors in the home, and we could do a whole other talk about, uh, you know, toxins in our home, and floor cleaners, plug-ins, aerosol sprays, things that we may not even. We should bring about. that up actually, because that is also a very okay. important thing when it comes to. So, cranky that. so that wasn't in our notes, but that was a very good point. <laughs> I don't know how I could make it in our notes, but uh, when we can remove any environmental stressors, any emotional stressors, uh, when we keep our homes calm, when we keep our kitties on a routine that helps reduce that stress and then when we can pick a time and maybe it is that we will do a 20 minute play session and we'll do it with the bird as our babies love and we'll bring them through the pre sequence so I even though they are indoor kitties they are really able to exercise that foundational feline instinct of being a cat the, the staring the stalking the chasing the catching uh, and then following that hunt up with a little treat or if you're doing it right before bed uh, following that up with their nighttime meal so that maybe they'll sleep as long as you do through the night. Um, but uh, making that decision to make it a part of that routine and knowing, especially because uh, we already know that we're dealing with feeling leukemia. So we already realize that this is something that can be extra enriching. It's reducing those stress stressors which is helping to stave off any secondary issues as well that could be um, that they could be susceptible to. Yeah, and let's let let's address the the in the household toxins that uh, many of us don't even think about. I didn't think about for many years. In fact, our Tygy also had slight asthma issues, and I had I had plugins. Um, era, what were they? Um, whatever right. plug in, Glade, Febreze, whatever, those plugins in almost every room because I was so into the scent, the smell, the so fresh, you know, mountain breeze or whatever that is. Um, I was so into that. Never once thought about our cats. We would spray anytime there was a, uh, somebody coming over or we just cleaned the house, we'd spray it down with the aerosol sprays. And I don't so really that the coat it, but I mean, it's just a little, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, and, and still to this day, so many of us use those until we learned how toxic it was, how it's also one of the leading causes of asthma and allergies, leading triggers of asthma and allergies in cats. And those can um, be secondary issues for healthy kitties as well. Correct. So if we can reduce as much as possible, you know, we now use, we won't go into the whole thing, but we now use uh, water and vinegar, a mixture of water and vinegar to clean our floors, our floor, you know, we have uh, solid floors. So, uh, you know, we always find like whatever the new floor cleaner was, which mm -hmm. was obviously highly That's scented better, or right. whatever it was. Um, so we really have, have done our best to mitigate the toxins in our home. And I think one of the things that I didn't realize, and this is especially important for FELV kitties as well, is that our cat's paws are so porous. So whether it's the litter, you know, we switch from clay litter, where they're absorbing uh, Whatever is the whatever chemicals. is on the floor in the litter box, anything, uh, whatever's on you, even they're absorbing that through their paw pads. Their ears are very vascular. You know, if you put on lotion, then you're rubbing your cat's head. Are are they? What is that? What is that lotion that they're right? So 
just thinking about what our cats are being exposed to, and there's so many studies that show that the concentration of toxins in cats is so much significantly higher than it is even in children in a home, and that's because they're on the floor, they're low to the ground, everything that you throw up in the in the air comes down, everything you clean the ground with comes down. Those plug-ins um, are right, the right eye level with them. So, um, and there and those paw pads again, they're yeah. so vascular. When you're cleaning our cats, I don't know if your cats are allowed on the counter, but our cats tell us where we get I to know, go in this so house. We do, yeah, some people judge us, but our cats like to eat their afternoon treats on the on the counter. Um, what we clean our countertops with, it used to always be something that was hugely scented and chemical based. Now, like Adrian said, it's vinegar and water. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's saving us a lot of money, I have to say that. Doesn't smell as good, but um, but the fresh scent of opening the, opening the windows, having air purifiers in the house, these things are um, are so much better for our cats. I don't know, I'm, I, I don't even miss it anymore. I go, I go to my sister's house sometimes and she she has all those plugins and I'm like wow that is really so strong. strong I had yeah. no idea that I was doing that so that's um, a little the little yeah, bonus a little uh, bonus point but I did want to uh, follow up you mentioned it a little bit too when Jay was talking about vertical space we're talking about activity and exercise and really inviting our cats to stay active um, and yes they're gonna sleep 12 to 16 hours a day absolutely that's not abnormal but when as we're working with our Pooh Bear right now who has an autoimmune disease separate um, he just wants to lay around all the time so you got to kind of get him up so try to be creative about how you can uh, implement vertical space if it is like a, a, a catwalk or if it's a uh, little shelves or whatever maybe you take their afternoon treat or you use indoor hunting feeders and you hide little snacks on the vertical space just to really encourage the not just that activity but that stimulation of hunting for something um, and there was something else I was going to say about, oh, just understanding our cats. You know, each cat is an individual. So as we've learned, some of our cats really love the high up vertical spaces way up there. And some cats really love kind of the middle ground. Hidey boxes are also really important. You know, cats are little predators, but they're also prey, especially when we're dealing with a cat that we know has a health issue like feeling leukemia. We want to make sure that they have safe spaces always. Maybe that's up high for them. Maybe it's a hidey box somewhere in your bedroom, but just providing kind of what they instinctively uh what instinct what they what their instincts really need to help feel safe and secure all the time and when we're talking about removing those stressors as well i was thinking um you know putting that playtime on a routine but also their meal times scooping their litter on a routine all their resources right their food their water their litter um really important that that's kind of on a routine as well when we really started implementing schedules our cats would line up and wait for me to finish cleaning their litter boxes every morning because that's how much they enjoyed a clean litter box and how used they used to uh, that routine they are. So yeah. um, reducing stressors, increasing activity, really engaging in that uh, emotional, mental, physical activity. Uh, and there are so many great resources out there. One more shout out, uh, Julie at Cat School. I think this is fascinating. A lot of people think cats can't be trained and God knows we have not trained all of ours very well yet, but they've trained us. They, yeah, but but she has some incredible free, uh, free videos resources. and resources on YouTube. Go and check it out. It just brings that engagement with your cat to a whole new level. And when you see how excited uh, our cats can be for that engagement and see how much they really long for it, it's amazing. So it's it especially important when we're when we already know. That we're dealing with an issue that's comp that's potentially compromising um, to do all the things that we can to bring enrichment and health. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then uh, we have our um, so we're, we've covered food, supplementation, exercise, enrichment. Um, all of these things are so important for our, uh, for our Bellevue kitties um, to to live a longer, healthier, happier life. Right? Like we want all of our cats to live as long as they can. And every cat with feline leukemia um, has the chance at living uh, that as as long of a life um, as the other as the other kitties in our home if given the right support. Right. So the other one is a controversial uh, topic yeah. for some. I don't know why, um, because most of most of our vets already know this. But when it comes to your feline leukemia kitties, we do not want to vaccinate them. Right. If they have already been di diagnosed with a um, with any ailment, actually, that it's the, any illness. Yeah. Anyway. If your cat has any illness, they don't they they should not be vaccinated. But especially with that weakened immune system. 
no longer will we want to take them back for those routine vaccines. There is a tighter test that you can get instead. Now, the majority of the overwhelming majority of vaccines, um, the studies now show that they usually one shot usually lasts your cat a lifetime anyway. But um, so we, we actually recommend this for all cats, regardless of if they're healthy or are compromised. But um, a titer test, T-I-T-E-R, you can ask your vet for it. They might try to charge you a little bit more money. You can ask them to go instead, go to Kansas State University where they can, it'll save them money and it'll save you money for these titer tests. Um, and it's a simple blood draw, uh, which we're probably doing anyway, as we should be, and we'll discuss that too, um, with, with our kitties to make sure that with our with our Felby kitties, we really want to make sure that their um, that their health is okay. So we do have to get those checkups. Um, we can get a titer test, which will run the antibodies, right? It's an antibody test. We all know that what it is now, um, since the pandemic started, a lot of, uh, because the antibody test is available um, for uh, for the, the disease that's happening right now. Um, but uh, but you can um, get this titer test run on your cast to see if they are still protected. Um, if they're not going to be at risk, it, it wouldn't matter. But most most vets know this. Your vet probably does know this if you have a good relationship with your vet. Um, it is said on every single um, vaccine container that is only to be given well, to healthy animals. Um, so so uh, well, and I we think don't want to do the don't. only one that we've really run into where someone uh, was has an FBLV positive kitty and their vet is recommending uh, vaccinations is the rabies vaccine right? right that's the that's the one and now that is um, number one our FBLV kitties are going to be indoor kitties so the every time when it comes to the V word we want to weigh the risk of the disease versus the risk of the vaccine and when you're dealing with an immunocompromised cat every vet will say no, we're not doing any more vaccines. So it really isn't a controversial Every issue. Should say. I, and I, but I encourage you. If this is if you find yourself in the position that we've we've had a few people reach out um, with their vets that are are still recommending it, uh, reach out to Dr. Judy Morgan. Reach out to Dr. Katie Woodley. There are some veterinarians out there that really have some excellent resources that you can share with your veterinarian as well, uh, so that you can make the best decisions for your. Belvy kitty, I'm saying. Uh -huh. um, well, and and I do have to say, like every every vet should do that, but like like she just said, there are some that are that are still recommending it. Um, so you have to be able to, you know, that's why we had to bring this up because if you are um, in a position where your veterinarian is still recommending that your Felvy kitty is being um, is getting should get a, a vaccine, we want to be armed with that information. We want to be able to. Um, politely decline um, any more vaccines for that's going to trigger an immune response which are our, our, our already weakened immune systems do not need um, so we just want to we want to throw that out there so if there's anyone out there that is uh, dealing with that um, you can you know you, you can be armed with information um, to know that uh, that we don't want to do that and shorten their lifespan right sure. and and right behind that that I also want to emphasize just how important our relationships with our veterinarians are, yes. especially for LV kitties, because we want to be bringing them in uh, twice a year. We want them to mm -hmm. be, uh, to evaluate. You forgot oh, the card. I'm sorry, the card. <laughs> But this is an observation. Very important. Right. It is very important. They're going to be looking at everything, their eyes, their gums, their weight, their lymph nodes. Uh, and this is going to be, even if they're not symptomatic, I know we cat people wait until there is a problem. And then we're like, oh, we got to make a vet visit. Proactive care uh, and scheduled care for our pelvic kitties is going to be really important. So it's really recommended twice a year, at least once a year to do that blood work to get that urinalysis and this can be really help uh, us find any early indicators of anything else going on as Jay mentioned from the secondary yeah illnesses. those secondary illnesses are often the 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 real killers of um, yeah of of these kitties. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we want to, we want to, um, like she said, make sure that we have a good relationship with a, with our veterinarian. Um, but we do want to be that, you know, beat the statistics. I think the statistics are that 15% of us cat parents take our cats in um, on a regular basis, yeah. on a yearly basis to just have a checkup. But our cats are stoic guys. They're, they're like she said earlier, they're predators, but they're also prey. So instinctively they mask their pain and that's 
why we knew nothing about of, about Ty Yee having anything because we didn't take him in for routine visits. The only time he ever went to a vet was to get neutered as a as a kitten. And so we we were not able to catch this early enough. We were not able to catch it in time until he was clearly showing horrible signs. Uh, we you know we had no idea. But for those of us that can beat that statistic start taking our cats in on a yearly basis. Um, if they're older, then we recommend doing it every six months. Take them into the vet, get their blood work drawn, have the vet check them out um, so that we can so that we can hopefully catch any secondary illness um, that might be creeping up and catch it before it gets before it's too late. Well and the value so of just that. building a health history with our veterinarian and just that, that is going to be so important because things can change so quickly and our cats are not going to tell us what's going on. So building that relationship with our veterinarian, feeling comfortable and confident asking the questions. We know how scary this is. We we felt um, just major emotional whiplash when in 2007 we when this happened with Tyvee. Right and it was a uh, a, a horrible time so or, uh, arming ourselves with as much information like this beautiful uh, conference is doing uh, today is just such an empowering thing so that we know the questions to ask and we feel confident going into the vet and saying hey this is what I'm noticing what do you think about that have you know be comfortable having those conversations yeah and and as well what go ahead Oh, I was probably about to say the same thing. And and also, um, in between those vet visits, we want to make sure that we are keeping a careful observation on our um, FVLV positive Bell V kitties um, at, at home too, right? I mean, watch that litter box, watch them, and see, you know, what what I know that sounds crazy. To catch crazy. I, we've got six little bellies right now, and I try to catch, uh, and we've got seven litter boxes, right? one more litter box and we have cats uh, and I try to catch each one of them peeing and pooping at least once a week uh, this way I'm making sure we've got our, our especially for my our 18 year old we've got two year old two to 18 I want to make sure that there's no straining I want to make sure that everything is coming out okay so much more important with our uh, FELV kitties mm -hmm. just to make sure that their litter box habits are know what they are you know yeah. it's uh, a lot of people will come and say, hey, I don't think my cat's peed in X amount of days. Well, that's very important information, you know. So when we're scooping the litter on a regular basis, on a routine, where our cats will wait in line for us to, for, to use the restroom, uh, scooping that litter on the routine and keeping an eye on those deposits so that you're going to catch anything. Maybe it's a little loose stool. Maybe there's some blood in the stool. Maybe it's constipation. Whatever is going on. We want to catch it early. We catch it. Mm -hmm. early and 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 deal with that yeah and going back to diet on that routine basis and getting our kitties um, off of a, a kibble diet or at least even feeding that kibble diet on a routine basis we have to also watch them eat we have to this is another thing that we failed at is that because we were feeding kibble they had an all-day buffet right we just poured out the food Do, how would we know who was eating what when if um, if we're feeding them in an, in, an, in a buffet style, right? Um, cats are not cows. They weren't made to graze their food. We do need to feed them, um, and that routine will really help, and, and, and it builds the bond between you and your and your Felvy kitty um, or all of your kitties. But, um, but if we're feeding them and we're watching how much they eat, that is going to be an early indicator of if they are starting to get sick um, or starting to feel bad as well. So we definitely want to keep an eye on um, on them individually and then we all know our kitties right like we know our kitties best we know we know our cats better than any vet could than any friend could um, or even we you know even anybody online could right so um, so you just keep an eye on their personalities on what they're on their behaviors on their their in what they're ingesting and what they're ingesting. <laughs> That's not a word. Um, their intake and their outtake. Their intake and their outtake, yes. Um, <laughs> keeping an eye on that it's at just home just is going to – justing. It's now a word. Whatever, uh, but it is. Uh, but it's gonna be. It, it's gonna be helpful for us to be able to catch anything before it gets too bad. And you know th those activity levels. You know when we really do make a make an effort to engage our cats and making sure that they're remaining active. And maybe it is if you've got an adventure kitty, get a harness, go through a cat school, learn how to keep them safe, taking them for a little walk, whatever it is. If there is a change in how they're feeling, 
we're going to also notice that by paying attention to their activity levels, how much they're sleeping. Even our cats like to switch up where they sleep every now and then, but I notice with our Pooh Bear, when he's not feeling well, he has a specific spot in the back of our closet that he goes uh, when he's feeling ill or when he's feeling scared about something. So knowing our cats, just like Jay said, is so important, um, just keeping an eye on any subtle changes and, and keep it keep a journal of it. I even uh, will uh, maybe even add weighing our kitties. You know, we're going to be going in every six months, ideally, with our fellow little ones. Um, I will weigh our older boys about once a month, and I just weigh myself. Not always the best news. Pick up a kitty, not roughly, just, you know, kind of catch them when they're, it's okay, and uh, weigh myself one more time, do the math, and that way you can catch any drops in weight. Yeah, uh, which is also in super between, important. Yeah, which is really important. Yeah. So maybe you miss that they're not eating as much, or maybe they're eliminating or having diarrhea that you missed or something, but keeping an eye on their weight is also something that can be um, very helpful as well, proactive. Yes, so I think we're um, a little early at, time at wrapping it up, I'm not sure. Oh, we, we pretty wow, much made time. it we're pretty good, but I just to, just to go over um, the different things that we can do um, for our, for our FLV kitties for FELV positive kitties um, is to support their immune system and give them, the, give them the longest, healthiest, happiest life possible, diet, nutrition, immunity support in every way, whether that means supplementation, whether that means exercise, well, exercise is there too, um, staying away from those vaccines, anything that's going to harm their immune system, reducing um, toxins, reducing in the toxins in the home, mm -hmm. exercise, and of course, love. Love is, uh, you know, love. The, the greatest among these is love. Do you know that a cat's emotional cortex in their brain is actually more similar to a human beings than even a dog's? If dogs are like man's best friend, which I love dogs, I'm not saying that, but just because our cats lack a lot of the facial muscle structure to be as expressive as, expressive as humans or dogs, uh, does not mean that they aren't truly feeling and absorbing and really experiencing all the amazing um, emotions. So. Yes. Yes. I so if you guys have any, you have any questions, questions. Um, we're going to open up for a Q&A and then. Uh, so we do have some questions out there. So I'm going to um, just a, a couple about the titer tests. Do you yeah. know if titer tests are adequate to avoid vaccine requirements that are mandatory in certain states? Uh, I know in Massachusetts, New York, the rabies vaccine is mandatory. So can the titer test um, avoid that requirement? So usually, now with an FELV positive cat, most veterinarians will will write a waiver because of the because of the illness that they're that they have. So most veterinarians, I would ask first for a waiver. Um, but and I don't know the laws for every state. Um, and the the issue is usually reading the titer, right? So different vets have different ideas. So some oh, have to state? have like what's they have to have this much titer in order for them to not be vac revaccinated. And some and, and many vets that we work with are like if they're showing a titer at all because of that memory cells, because of the memory cells, then it's good. Um, but it, it really, you know, working with your vet on that is the. Thing. But I would certainly, especially for uh, FELV, F-E-L-V. It's our new F -E -L -V. word now. We're going to say FELV. Uh, yeah, that, that waiver is something that is uh, most every veterinarian will be aware of. And I think that that's also why it's so important to have that relationship with our veterinarians as well. Because, yes, if we take our kitty into the new vet and we don't have any kind of history with them and we say, well, they are uh, feeling positive or whatever that may be, you know, it, it, it really helps when there's that relationship there mm -hmm. and saying, well, you know, he is an FELV or she is an FELV positive kitty. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ask for that waiver for the rabies vaccine. Yeah. So I, yes, we understand there's a lot of issues when it comes to that mandatory uh, vaccination yeah. by, for rabies. But, um, and there are different reasons why, there you are would, many, why you would, uh, why anyone would need to know that your cat is, is vaccinated, right? So like if you are boarding them or if like some, uh, if you take them to groomers and things like that, like those are the cases in which you would need a titer um, or a waiver um, that might, may or may not accept it, right? So it's, it's who's going to accept the, the, the titer is really the, yeah. more of the question if your cats are at home the pet sitter comes over like for us like our pet sitter comes to the house she stays here you know there's we don't we don't really need a titer because we don't we don't board them and they don't go to the groomer and things like that right right and i mean it, for outdoor kitties or 
if, you know, for wounds of unknown origin or something like that, say you get a, like a bat in the house or some sort of an animal in the house that is acting a little funny, you know, mm -hmm. that's when the rabies titer kind of comes into play. Right. Yeah. And for peace of mind for us, if it's like my cat might be exposed to rabies in some way, shape or form, then getting that titer is going to be peace of mind for us. If, you know, we're, we're wanting to we're just keep them from, sure. yeah, especially a, a velvet kitty. Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on what part of the country you're in. I mean, the rabies is very different in different animal populations and different parts of the country too. So just being aware yeah. locally. Um, so I'm going to go back to your nutrition part. I'm going to try and walk through your presentation and have the questions go through that way. Um, so we're talking about dry food versus wet food. Um, so focusing on uh, foods that are the dry, if you're going to do dry food, do, do dry food minimally and grain free dry food. Is that what you're recommending? Yeah, so I mean, yes, because uh, grain free is because uh, cats are not made to digest grains, um, but they are also not made to digest carbs. And a lot of these um, pet food companies actually replace the grains with more carbohydrates. And so um, both of them are going to create inflammation in the body. So just kibble in general, even the highest quality kibble, the highest quality that we've ever found had 19 percent carbohydrates. Cats are, have a requirement of about two. Right. No, I mean, 10 or less at least and we haven't we've yet to find a kibble out there that has that little the majority of them are 40 to 80 percent even uh carbohydrates and so um so minimalizing the the kibble is going to be over like really really helpful for overall health for an FELB positive well i just want to mention that i you know for anyone who's grabbing their bag of cat food right now and looking to see how what the percentage of carbohydrates are those will not be listed on your cat food. Um, and I think it's because they're so high and it's not a biological requirement. So there is, uh, if you go to our website. require it. They're, we're, they're tr we're trying right. we're to trying get that changed, but. Right, this. because I mean, that's something that would be important. It is something that's important for many cat parents, I think, especially velvy cat parents. Uh, but if you do go to our website and you could probably look this up on pretty much anywhere, the carbohydrate a calculator. Yeah. So you take uh, the protein, you can find out moisture, what's in the food ash, that you take. yeah. And you add that and then you subtract that by a hundred. And um, there's there's four. I'm I'm blanking. Protein, uh, moisture, ash, and uh, something else. I don't know. I can't remember right now. But so you add those up. It's on our website, but yeah. you add it up and then subtract it by a hundred and that's how many carbohydrates are in um, a, a bag of dry food. What is the website that you mentioned that was finding recipes to cook for your cat? It's called freshfoodconsultants.org. And you also mentioned a Dr. Judy Morgan and a Dr. somebody else. Dr. Katie Woodley. Yeah, so she goes by the, uh, the, natural, the natural Pet, pet doctor. doctor is on um, Instagram, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook. Uh, so drjudymorgan.com. Uh, Dr. Judy Morgan is also on Facebook. She's rocking some TikTok now TikTok, too. TikTok, TikTok. Um, and Dr. Katie Woodley is on Instagram, Facebook, I think the naturalpetdoctor.com. Yeah. So she's a great resource as well, has a lot of great information. information. In fact, Dr. Judy Morgan has a um, a program that she offers for cat parents that is a it's it's I think it's like twenty eight dollars or something, and it is a um, a program on all the steps on how to help your cat live the longest life. It's called Cat Longevity Course. Yep. And um, that would be great for definitely for all the viewers here today. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is a good one. Uh, can your um, Felvy kit, when mixed with food, uh, does it have to be consumed in a certain time frame or can it, or it, does it degrade once mixed in food? My felu or feline leukemia cat um, takes his time eating wet food, and it may be there. Um, it's in enclosed pet dish for a while. Also, we already give three supplements: a probiotic, pet immune, PI, immune, uh, immuquin supplement. Uh, any problems giving your supplement in addition? So no, no problem. Awesome on That's the great. added supplements. Um, no, no problem adding in um, our supplements with them. Um, they are natural and kept at room temperature, so it's absolutely fine if to it sits in the food. yeah, if it sits in the dish. We have a few that like to take their time as well. We do too. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Interesting question. Uh, do you know why there isn't a mouse flavored cat food? I think I heard you there say. Is. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is. They, I don't, what is it called? Mousy? I, the, I, don't, I don't know. We haven't opened it up yet because we just haven't. I was like, it. is there just going to be a little mouse in there? Like, I don't know. We haven't opened it up. It is mouser. a canned food and it's called Mouser. Yeah, it's mouser, called yeah. Mouser and it's a, it's a new food that is. And then there's, uh, what is that website? Um, I can't remember, but there's a website and this is again, beyond where we can go personally for our own personal choices. Um, oh, but no, they, they sell frozen mice mm -hmm. to cat parents so that you can, um, and you can order it online and you can give it, it's the whole prey diet, right? So, um, it really is a, a great way to feed your cats, but we, we can't, we can't, I can't. We can't. She got it. like the little. The so cradle. there, yeah. There's a comment out here too, just from one of our attendees saying that there are there are ingredients of concern in the mouse cat food. So make sure you okay. take a right. deep look at it. So anyway, so there's. Thank just, you for that. Just yeah. sh sharing a comment out out in the out in the Thank virtual you. room here. Um, all right. I'm just looking at the questions here, make sure my notes, I have my questions here. I think most of the folks covered the questions that I had too here. Um, looks like, looks great. Well, too, so tell us again, share with us again, how can folks find the two crazy cat ladies and also share what do you cover in your podcast? Oh, absolutely. Um, so we are on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as the Two Crazy Cat Ladies. And Pinterest. Um, this, for our pinners what, out there. this is our logo, what you can look for as our um, whatever cover photo or whatever. Um, we are, um, our podcast, well, our podcast is called Back in the Closet uh, with the Two Crazy Cat Ladies because we actually record it in our closet. It's it's all That's over, funny. it's all over the place uh, as far as the, the, the subject topics. and the topics. It's It goes from cats, 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 cats to business. Um, but it is, uh, but we do a lot of interviews with some amazing veterinarians and uh, and people in the cat, cat industry. Cat in general. Yeah. yeah and cat advocates. So um, that's our podcast. We go live on social media on Wednesdays um, on Instagram, Facebook, and, and TikTok. Um, and I think, oh, and live on Thursdays on uh, for our Think About It Thursday on all platforms, including YouTube and, um, and then our podcast. Excellent. All right, I've got I've got one more question here from Donna because Donna will never talk to me again if I don't read her question. So um, she wants to know: uh, Do you agree with the statement um, that grain-free, wet or dry, causes cardiomyopathy in dogs or not? Oh, in dogs? No, mm -hmm. actually, it's so. So what ha happened was um, the FDA came out. Or too early before the studies were done, the FDA came out and said that it could possibly be uh, grain-free diets and novel protein diets or exotic proteins that were causing the uh, cardiomyopathy in dogs. Um, and then, then they did all the research, and that was actually debunked. So it is not um, it is not related to that. In fact, the majority of those cases were all breed specific. And, um, and cardiomyopathy was um, specific to those breeds. That's in dogs. In cats, it's never been a thing as, as far as, as, far as uh, grain-free grain diets. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Wow, I thought I was putting you on the spot and you just whipped that right off. So, <laughs> good job, good job, excellent. Um, yeah, it's like shebang, right? Um, so I think that, oh, here we go. Uh, no, in cats as, as oh as in dogs well i think donna i think she covered both right yeah and reach out to us if, if she's in a situation where she's looking for more yeah. information or we actually um i don't have them saved on my computer but i know how to get to the studies that that debunk that even in dogs super cool. excellent well thank you so very very much for joining us today and thank you for being our uh, the 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 end show <laughs> for online feline leukemia day uh, thank you so much for doing this i just i just uh it feels so good knowing how many people are going to have more tools and more community and more help information with their uh babies yeah so thank you so much thank you so much for putting this on